needed. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Amen. God's word for our meditation this morning is our Old Testament lesson found in the 8th chapter of the book of 1 Kings. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, Just a little bit northeast of Brainerd, Minnesota, you can find the family cabin where I spent most of my summers. It's still there. I get to go there once a year for a fishing opener, yet it's no longer in the family. But it's a place that when I was growing up and even well into, an adult, into adulthood, it's a place I love to go. Beautiful lake, pretty little beach. Long, narrow strip of land, beautiful yard. It's a place where I love going. I loved to go there and stay for weeks. In fact, for a long time, that's the place where I wanted to go and live and retire. But not everybody would agree with me on that. <coughs> because there's not all the modern conveniences there. When I first started going up there as a child, there was no electricity. Okay? We used the gas lanterns to, to light the inside of that cabin. There's no running water. In fact, if you have to go to the bathroom, you got to go outside to an outhouse. It doesn't smell so good in there. It's not everybody's cup of tea. But when I was growing up, I thought that that place was just a, like a palace. It was like a mansion, even though it didn't have all of those modern conveniences. If I took most of the women up to, the, to that cabin right now, I know there's one question that would come to your mind. Pastor, what's so special about this place? I think that there would be people today that if they walked into this place of worship, they would ask that very same question. What's so special about this place? It's not like a cathedral. It's, be it's beautiful, it's warm, it's cozy. But if you compare this church to some of the cathedrals in Europe, or even to some of the big, huge worship facilities in our countries today, people would say, what's so special about this place? What makes this place so special? God gives us the answer this morning in his word. He tells us this place is so special, first of all, because God speaks to us here. And secondly, this place is so special because God listens to us here. Our text takes us back, way back into the Old Testament, almost 3,400 years ago, maybe even longer than that, when Solomon dedicated the first temple. That temple was quite a facility. It was four stories high. It took up the room of a couple city blocks. In fact, if that building was still in existence, exi existence today, it would be considered to be one of the seven wonders of the world by far. It wasn't just a place of brick and stone there were places, there was ornaments of gold, many of the fixtures and many of the insides of, of the buildings and the structures were encased with gold and precious metals. Precious jewelry and, and ruby and stones were used to decorate that place. The cost of what it cost to build that was phenomenal. <clears throat> Quite a place of worship. Solomon had, King David had wanted to, to build a place of, a permanent place of worship, a permanent house for God, but way back and from the beginning of his service as king of Israel, but God wouldn't allow him to do that, but allowed his son Solomon to do so. They went from worshiping in a tent to worshiping in one of the grandest buildings that was ever, ever built. One of the things that Solomon had said before, in the, just right before our text, is he said, is he reminded the people as he dedicated the temple and lifted his hands up in prayer 
in proclaiming God's truth to his people. He reminded the people that God can't be contained in any building. God resides in heaven. He's present everywhere. But yet, this place of worship, this house of God, the word for temple is literally house of God, was special because of what God did there. Just as he does here for us, God speaks to his people and spoke to his people in the temple. God's people would get a reminder, and they did every single morning, every single day with the sacrifices. There was the morning and evening sacrifices that took place where a lamb was, was slaughtered, its blood was poured out upon the altar, the pieces were cast under the, under the fire in the altar to burn whole and completely morning and evening. The daily sacrifice which paid for this, which was symbolic of paying for the sins of the people that they committed every single day. There were sacrifices that went on daily. Not only the, the lamb that was killed at the Passover, but the blood, the bulls that were, were sacrificed and blood sacrificed and blood all over the place. The Day of Atonement, a reminder of, of, of again, blood needing to be shed to pay for sin. Constant, constant reminder. And that there was only forgiveness found through the shedding of blood. God was speaking to his people in a very visual, visual way. We're reminded in the book of Hebrews that all of these animal sacrifices didn't pay for one sin. But it was only the sacrifice of God's own son, God himself, the shedding of his blood, paid for the sins of all mankind. That's what those sacrifices pointed ahead to. God speaking to his people, speaking to his people about their sin and separation from him, and the reminder that the only thing that could bring them back together with him was the shedding of blood coming from the Messiah, from the Savior who was to come. That's what makes this place so special. Jesus himself reminded his people when he came into this world. Remember when he told his enemies when they asked for a sign that, that he was, that, a sign to prove that he was who he claimed to be. And Jesus said, destroy this temple and I will rebuild it again in three days. Jesus <coughs> was the fulfillment of that temple because it was his sacrifice needed one time to pay for sins. This is what you and I are reminded of every time we come here. That's what makes this place of worship so special. Once again, and if you ever wonder why we do many things the same way, it's because we need to hear it over and over again. This morning as we confessed our sins together to God, as we confessed our unworthiness, our, our re reminding ourselves and each other, of the one thing that we deserve is hell because of our sins. We leave our sins at the feet of God. Then we hear that precious message of forgiveness. That proclamation of forgiveness. That because of Jesus' sacrifice, our sins are wiped away. We hear God's word spoken to us. Not only where we hear that message of forgiveness, but that message which focuses on Christ and what his will is for us. It's proclaimed every single time we come here. And God touches us through his word when we come here and we receive his sacrament, the Lord's Supper, where we receive his body and blood, the very body and blood that he gave, sacrificed for us. We eat and drink, and we receive the forgiveness of sins in a personal, intimate way from Jesus himself. That's what makes this place so special. God speaks to us. He tells us the things that we need to hear. He encompasses us with his love. That's why the writer of the Hebrews tells us, let's not give up meeting together, as some have come into the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more,
more, even as we see the day approaching. As Solomon was holding up how special that temple was to his people, he also reminded them that that place was special because God listens to us. God listened to his people there too as they voiced their prayers. And listen to the prayer of Solomon as he once again spoke about God and asking God to have that place which bore his name, his reputation, his word, and said, Lord, may this place draw to you the foreigner so that the foreigner may be drawn to you and come here and bring his praise. And when that foreigner offers up his prayer, listen to him, grant him what he's asking. It's kind of strange to hear that coming from some of God's people back in the Old Testament time. They were very, they had a tendency to be very focused inwardly. When they talked about people who weren't part of God's chosen people, they used the term Gentile which was a very, very derogative term. Solomon doesn't use that term here. He uses the term for foreigner. And he's asking that God reach out to them with his goodness and his mercy and his forgiveness that comes through the Savior and to listen to them. That was Solomon's prayer, knowing that God was going to hear an answer. And then Solomon's asking, you know what, Lord, when these foreigners bring their prayers to you, Say yes. That's what he was saying when he said answer them. You and I, we know that when we pray that there's always going to be an answer. God always answers prayer. Whether it's yes, whether it's no, or maybe it's wait. Solomon is, is, is asking God to say, don't say no. Don't say wait. Say yes. Answer their prayers that they might see your power and strength an ability to intervene in whatever situation they're in and show them that you are their God. The bold prayer. That's what makes this place so special too. Not only as we hear God, but as we get a chance here to bring our, our prayers and requests before Him, to pray for one another, to pray for what's needed, praying boldly, knowing that God will hear and answer, trusting in the promises that Jesus makes with prayer. That the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. To hear Jesus' promises with prayer when he tells us, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you will honor me. When Jesus says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. When Jesus says, whatever you ask in my name, I will give it to you. Just about every Sunday, we're praying to the Lord, giving him praise, asking him for the things that we need, praying for our own needs, praying for the needs of others. That's something we continue today and continue in the future, and we know that God will hear and answer. That's what makes this place so special. You know, if I were to take my family, my wife and daughter up to the cabin in Brainerd, I can tell you what the reaction would be. The nose would get turned up. Really? You like coming up here? You like sleeping in a place where you can hear the mice running around on the floor in the middle of the night? What makes this place so special? It's a place when I grew up, where I took my family vacations, spent time with my dad all day out on the water, where I learned how to swim, where I learned how to shoot ducks, a place where I just loved being out in nature and seeing God's creation. One of the, it's the place that fostered my love for the outdoors that I have today. That's what makes that place so special. What makes this place so special? This is a place where you and I, we, he, we were brought to the font, made God's children through the power of the water and the word. It's a place where we hear God's word proclaimed to us, where we learned about Jesus, where we were strengthened and grown in the truths of Holy Scripture. 
It's the place where Jesus touches us, not only through his word, but also through the sacrament. It's a place where he listens to us as well. What's so special about this place? God speaks to us here. God listen, listens to us here. And we too can say with Jacob when he saw that stairway to heaven and called that place Bethel, the house of God. And Jacob said boldly and with faith and joyfully, surely this is where God is. Surely this is the house of God. Surely this is the gate to heaven. It is. All because of Jesus. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We will confess our Christian faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. You can find those words on page 31 in the front of the hymnal.